Coming in at only 3.3 liters, this small form factor build does offer some really awesome 1080p gaming performance. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a super small form factor gaming PC that doesn't require a GPU. We're going all APU and integrated graphics with this, and with the advances in AMD driver technology, especially their new FSR 3.1 and frame gen, we should see some amazing performance out of this little rig. And when it comes down to it, this is a very minimalistic build. We've got everything we need right here on the table. As you can see, it doesn't entail very much. And when it comes to storage, I do want to thank SK Hynix for sponsoring this video. They sent over their new Platinum P41 SSD. This is available over at Newegg. I'll leave some links in the description. We've got the two terabyte version here. This thing is crazy fast. PCIe 4.0, we'll run some tests on it. And if you're not familiar with SK Hynix, they're one of the world's leading semiconductor manufacturers. DRAM, NAND flash, and controllers. In fact, a lot of the high-end RAM and high-end storage solutions are using SK Hynix chips, so big shout out to them for sponsoring this video. Obviously, to keep this build small form factor, we had to go with the mini ITX board. I opted to use the ASRock A620i. It's actually one of the least expensive mini ITX AM5 boards on the market. This is the second one that I'll be using in a build, and the first one's still going strong, so I figured I'd go ahead and pick up another one for this build. Again, for that storage, we're going with a 2TB SK Hynix Platinum P41 SSD. It's a PCIe 4.0 drive with read speeds up to 7,000 megabytes per second and write speeds up to 6,500 megabytes per second. And if you're using an older motherboard, don't worry because this is compatible with PCIe 3.0, but those speeds will be limited. Either way, we're going to be able to get some crazy fast read and write speeds out of this drive. Now it's time to move over to the APU we're going to be using. This is the AMD Ryzen 7 8700G. We've got built-in RDNA 3 graphics, so it's the 780M here. We've got 8 cores, 16 threads, and paired up with some really fast RAM, this is a great performer. So it's going to rely on that system RAM as VRAM, and theoretically, the faster you can get that RAM, the better performance you can get out of the iGPU. With this unit, we're going to be using some Kingston Fury running at 8000 MHz. It's a 32 gigabyte dual channel kit, so we've got two 16 gig DIMMs here. And uh, yeah, I mean, so far everything's going together really nicely, but we need to worry about cooling that 8700G. And given the case that I'm going to be using here, I had to go with a low profile cooler. The 8700G does come with a Wraith Spire, but it's a bit too tall for the Nwen Chopin. So I did need to go with something a bit smaller, so I opted to use one of my favorite low profile coolers right now. The Thermalright X53, or the XP90. So it's got a 90 millimeter fan. It's only 53 millimeters tall. And these are around 22 bucks. You can get them in several different colors. They have a white. We've got the silver and gray here. They've also got a black variant. But yeah, it's a really good cooler and basically fits in any case. And speaking of the case we're going to be using here, this is the Inwin Chopin Max. They actually leave a little extra room here for a larger cooler, but we're still going to be using that X53 because it's going to be more than enough for this 8700G. But another favorite thing about this case here is the fact that it comes with a 200 watt power supply pre-installed. We've also got enough room in the back to add two 2.5 inch drives so you could go with two SSDs or two mechanical drives. And once it's assembled, all the cables are cleaned up, this thing is only coming in at 3.3 liters, making it one of the smallest cases that you can get with a pre-installed power supply, not having to go with a Pico. This is definitely one of my favorite cases to use for these APU builds. Super small form factor comes with that power supply, and the price on the max is around $129 over on Amazon. Now I need to get my operating system installed, and we'll get right into some testing and see how this thing performs. So far, so good. Everything installed without a hitch. As you can see, we've got that 8700G, 32 gigs of DDR5 at 8000 megahertz, and of course the Radeon 780M. I went into the BIOS and dedicated 8 gigs here. Now, on some of these boards that I've seen with the 8700G, they will run at a higher wattage without any kind of modification. So this is just basically stock BIOS settings minus taking that XMP profile up. We'll go ahead and stress this out. And we're sitting at about 80 watts with the 8700G. Again, I've done some testing with this chip in other boards, and sometimes we can actually hit around 115 watts there. But given the form factor, cooler, and everything that we're using here, I think up to around 80, 85 watts is going to be fine. So far, max temp hit 74. 
case is closed right now and it's actually not that loud these these thermal right coolers do a really great job with these small form factor builds and they're very inexpensive when you compare them to some others on the market first thing i want to take a look at here are some the first thing i want to take a look at here are some benchmarks Checking out Disc Mark for that SK Hynix Platinum P41 SSD, and they definitely weren't lying. We did reach read speeds actually over 7,000 and write speeds over 6,500. Next up, we've got Geekbench 6, and on this 8700G, we got a single core score of 2,790 and 14,532 multi core with this Zen 4 APU. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. Night Raid looking pretty good here at a 34,068, and I also ran Time Spy. We're coming in at a 3,781. When it comes to these RDNA 3 based integrated graphics, these synthetic scores here on that iGPU are looking great, but now we need to see how this thing does with some real world gaming. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 using the built in benchmark 1080p, balanced with FSR set to balanced. We saw an average of 130 FPS and our 1% low was 74. This is one of those games that does work really well on these iGPUs. Next up, Forza Horizon 5, 1080, medium, no FSR. We don't need any kind of scaling with this. We're seeing averages of around 98 FPS, and to tell you the truth, if I just took FSR to balanced here with this game, we could run this at a continuous 120 FPS on this little system. I had to throw Fallout 4 in here because it's been hit or miss with the recent update from Bethesda, but it definitely looks like at 1080 high here, we don't have any access to FSR, we can run this at a constant 60. And usually when I do my testing here, I'm connected to a 120Hz monitor. I actually forgot to swap over to 120, so there's a chance we could get on up there with this game, but at 60, high settings, this is still a really fun game to play. Okay, so this is where AMD's latest technologies come in. We're not using FSR with this game. We're at a true 1080p medium settings, but what we do have enabled is AMD's frame generation. It's built into the settings here. And yeah, with this one here, we're seeing an average of around 85 FPS. This is one of those games I personally don't like to scale, and it kind of seems to be the case with some of the Nixus games on the market right now that were ported over. Even just setting FSR to balance kind of ruins the whole look, so I wanted to keep this native, and that frame gen will allow us to do that. I'll tell you what, wish CD Projekt Red would add it over here for Cyberpunk 2077. Now we're at low with FSR set to auto, and if I had to guess, we're at about a balanced FSR here, just looking at everything. Not bad, and it is fully playable like this. We're seeing averages of around 78 FPS, but having that frame gen from AMD built in would be really nice, especially for these lower end systems, and especially when it comes to handheld gaming systems. Having it with Cyberpunk would be great. I know Nvidia does have it included, but we don't have any native frame gen from AMD with Cyberpunk 2077. And the final game we have here is Horizon Forbidden West. I've actually been running into some issues with this one. Uh, sometimes I'll start the game up, same exact system, same exact settings, and it definitely seems like something's wrong. It'll run at about 40 FPS, even with frame gen on. Enabling that or taking FSR up or down really doesn't change anything. There's got to be some kind of driver bug going on with the latest AMD driver in this one. But we did have to take it down to low 900p. Really, that's how it is with this one just a harder game to run on these integrated graphics. Final thing I want to take a look at here are CPU temps and total system power consumption. We are working with a very small form factor PC, but with this X53 CPU cooler and the fact that we can boost up to around 85 watts with the 8700G, average gaming CPU temps were only 68 degrees Celsius, and the maximum that I saw this hit was 82, and that's running an extreme stress test. We didn't hit thermal throttle with this thing. Another thing I always like to monitor with these small form factor builds is total system power consumption. And this is from the wall using a kilowatt meter because, you know, energy costs around the world are much different for some people. At idle, this is pulling 26 watts, and I am in performance mode. There's a chance we could definitely get this down. 
And while gaming, with the way it's set up right now, it hit 126 watts on average. Overall, definitely think it's a really great performer for 1080p gaming. Some of the newer stuff you may have to drop down just a bit, but overall, it's only 3.3 liters small, so it is a very small unit. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave links in the description, and I do want to give SK Hynix another shout out for sponsoring this video. Definitely check out their drives over on Newegg. All links for everything I used in this build are down below. And like always, thanks for watching.